injection relay on the early style Z cars, 1975, 1976. It's easiest to tell because it is twice as long as it is wide. The part number on it is an A13000001. If you look right up here above my left hand, you'll see the connectors. The white portion of the connector is plugged into right here. This is another one. There is the original is still installed in the vehicle. It's held on by two screws here, which are impossible to get to because of this bulkhead right here. So they've given you two other screws over here to relieve, and this will drop it down. The power supply from the battery and the ground at the battery come to right here, over to this relay. So this is where everything comes. This is where everything starts. Everything happens right here. The splitting up and sending of power and grounds and controls to all the rest of the fuel injection occurs right here. There is one other power supply that runs into this, but we won't really be concerned with it because they're very much, they're very reliable. You'll never have any problem with that. Biggest problem starts at the battery. If everything's clean up to here, if this system is functioning properly, all your power supplies up to your injectors, cold start injector, the auxiliary air regulator, thermal time switch, and the cylinder head switch, the, the fuel pump, all emanate from there. And we're going to talk more about that in a minute. Okay, this is a schematic which I drew up some years ago trying to demystify this relay. It contains two separate sheets, both of which you'll receive with this video. The first one is an actual, as you see it, here's the actual relay itself. And I'm going to lay it down here about alongside of it. There are five sets of pins on the, the lower portion, and there are six pins on the upper section. It's easy to tell which ones they are, and I've drawn them in the actual physical sizes that they are. There's white connectors, white spade connectors, and narrow spade connectors. Each one does a different thing. Don't get upset about the fact that a big one might do a, a different job than a little one. They're all important. The relay itself has no connection between itself inside. The, it is two separate complete relays. There are cross connections, but basically they are two complete separate relays simply mounted in the same box. Later years of the folks that have the 77-78, uh, this is split into two separate ones. One is the fuel pump relay, the other side is the injection relay. And they actually have fuel pump one and fuel pump two relays, so we won't get them, don't get too carried away with this. This is one that's most commonly seen and one that seems to give the most trouble. The injection picture, when you get to looking at it, I don't know if it'll show, but on this, the printed circuit board here, is a stamped number which will correspond to all the numbers that you see on the on the sheet. So don't be afraid that you've got to figure out which ones these are. They are labeled right up underneath each one of them. Now in order to test it, I've taken and drawn a schematic of each of the wires entering the relay and what they're actually there to do. On the right hand side, of this picture is the fuel pump, the ignition cranking and starting signal, the battery hot fusible link, meaning coming from your uh, battery through the fusible link, not to be confused with the battery hot that you saw out on, on the battery itself. The ground at the battery, the negative terminal, the ignition hot, which is, means the ignition, when the ignition is in the on position, this terminal here will get hot. Battery hot direct, meaning at the positive terminal, is the one which one might confuse with the battery hot through the fusible link. So you have several power supplies coming into this relay, all of which are, ne are necessary to either run the car during the normal run procedure or get it started. Over here on the other side are the outputs. The auxiliary air regulator, which is the fast idle portion of the injection system, must, is electrically warmed on a bimetal strip, opens and closes due to a heat, heater coil that's built into it, and it needs a hot supply. It also needs to turn on at the same time as the fuel pump. The cold start injector valve and the ignition cranking signal are tied together because when you crank it, it sprays, it makes the cold start injector spray. The airflow meter is incorporating a safety switch in it so that if the engine were to die and the fuel pump would not know the engine had quit running, some way we have to sense that. And so they do so by utilizing a small micro switch inside the airflow meter itself. And these two connections over here, 88A and 86B, control that circuit. The last one is the dropping resistors, which is 
the power supply leaving this relay is still a full 12 volts, but once it gets to the drop ring resistors, it kicks it on down to 3 volts per injector. So this wire out here supplies your injectors. This one here is your safety circuit. These 86 is the one to the cold start to get it started any time that you, it's uh, cold enough outside to make that injector fire. And the auxiliary air regulator is just to shut off the fast idle after the engine starts running, approximately three minutes. The fuel pump stays hot all the time. The ignition input, the power supplies and the grounds are all over on this side and I've drawn them such that this is the output, this is the load, this is the supply power and grounds. If you want to test this circuit, what you need to realize is that any line that connects to each other will should have, when tested from either end of it, here to here, should show continuity. The fuel pump, the ignition cranking signal and the cold start valve, when you hit the key, you should get a, your cold start valve should get a hot signal to it. This relay controls all of the functions that are going to happen inside that injection system, whether it's in a running position or in a non-running position. I won't go into all the details of what makes this work. If you get a, if you get a, a specific uh, no-start problem or, or whatever, this will really help you to be able to analyze where the power should be and what, what you're looking for. At least if you were to go in and disconnect the connectors from this relay, you should be able to find power at the specific point that shows here. If this says battery hot direct on the 88 terminal, you flip back to the other page Find the 88 terminal, not 88D, not 88A, it's 88. And the 88 terminal is right here, it's this main hot wire right here coming in. And you should feel, see a power, you should be able to take a test light and test that. And you should be able to test with a simple test light whether you have power supplies going into the, into the relay. If all of those are correct according to the powers that should be in here, and remember, you're going to have to make sure that the ignition is in the on position to get power at the one where it says ignition cranking signal and on ignition hot. Make sure both of those are functional. <laughs> if you just test them and they come up nothing, remember that they're going to have to be turned into position that they normally run in order for them to test correctly. These two signals here, uh, symbols here, excuse me, are diodes. They keep the, the current flowing in one direction. Just understand that uh, the current can flow in the direction that the arrow points and it cannot flow the other direction. Ultimately necessary so that you don't wind up back feeding the starter and having it stand there cranking or wind up with an ignition that won't shut off.